Dr. John Webster. Good morning, John. How are you? Oh, very good morning to you and to Kimberly and to our viewers here in Barbados and, and beyond. Um, this morning we're going to do something slightly different. We're actually going to look at uh, birds featured on the stamps of Barbados. Mm -hmm. And I spent a little time collecting information and images um, and acquiring some of the stamps just so we can have a closer look at them. Um, so we, we're going to first have a look at the the uh, 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 overview of the, well, let's do a little history first. On screen we have the probably the very first stamp that was ever um, created for Barbados back in 1852. Uh, if you look at it closely, you see there's, there's no value on it. Um, the, the value was, was indicated by the color of the stamp, mm -hmm. and that was a one penny stamp. And it didn't have any perforation. They were printed in sheets, and they were cut up at the post office. Mm -hmm. I think there's one or two post offices in the island at that time. And then we move 114 years on to our independence stamp, and it's quite different. Um, they've become quite colorful uh, in two uh, basic different categories. I'm not an expert, but I will share the limited information I have. We have the definitive series, which is a, a set of stamps that it covers the entire range from like one cent to ten dollars, and those are used for postage, um, general postage. Uh, they come up with a new set every five to six years in Barbados, and they typically depict things that are national like flowers, in this case birds, the, the ones in the top left, the group in the top left, are the definitive series that was issued for, for birds um, in, on the 7th of August 1979. And then we have the commemorative series, and the post office here chooses to issue stamps with quality rather than quantity, so they limit that, and I'll explain what I mean by that, they limit that to four to six um, issues per year, and those will celebrate an event yeah. or um, something that, that is, is worth commemorating or bringing to the attention of pub, the public and visitors. And um, basically, other, other countries will issue so many of those that they flood the stamp collectors. The commemorative series are, are very important to stamp collectors um, who often focus on themes. And our theme is going to be birds. So we're going to look at the bird stamps. And if we can just bring that that uh, last picture there again, this, this is the the image of uh, all of the stamps that were issued on the seventh of August, nineteen seventy nine, depicting the birds of Barbados. Well, let me ask you, John. Is it is it traditional for for uh, post offices around the world to look at birds? Is it is it or is it uh, unique to Barbados? No, it's not unique to Barbados at all. What you have to appreciate is that stamps. Um, represent revenue to the country mm -hmm. and if th there's a huge number of stamp collectors or philatelists around the, the world and people who are, who are focused on themes will want to collect it, um, stamps that depict birds, flowers, mm -hmm. sea life, whatever. So the, the philatelic bureau will basically focus on things that can generate revenue for them. Mm -hmm. um, the Philatelic Bureau was, was started in 1968, and it's an important part of the revenue um, for the Barbados Postal Services. Um, on the screen now we have the very first uh, stamp in that definitive series from 1979, and that depicts the grassland yellow finch. Now what I'm trying to do this morning is to show an image of the stamp and a, a accompanying image of the bird as I would have seen it and photographed it here in Barbados. So that is the grassland yellow finch, which we know as the grass canary. Most of these birds we've dealt with in previous programs, but I'm now trying to relate them mm -hmm. this morning to the, to the stamps. stamps. Mm -hmm. And today we are going to look at most of the de definitive series. Next week we look at some of the commemorative. The um, gray kingbird? This king is the gray kingbird. And a um, very aggressive bird, as we've discussed in the past. Uh, we'll seriously defend its territory. Um, for, against anyone that's raised into it, whether it's human beings or other birds. Now this is a bird that, that, that looks quite um, stoic, especially due to the, 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 the two-tone color, but um, I don't think of that. a gray kingbird. Well, you need to look. Uh, can believe they're all over the place. They're really? actually a very calm bird, and we, we need to go out and have a good bird watching session. We should. So, yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, you should take us out and show us some of the birds. <laughs> I, I, I'm curious though, John, who works with the Philatelic Bureau to determine, you know, the, 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 
which bird, why that bird, and, and who authenticates this from the... That's a good question, though. I, I asked the same question when I visited them earlier this year because I was preparing for this, this two, two programs for a while now, collecting material and whatnot, and I asked a similar question. And basically, what, what they told me is anyone who has an ID mm -hmm. that is worth featuring can come to them and discuss it, and they can bring images, Mm -hmm. And they, they can, if they can do a good sales job, basically, mm -hmm. the Philatelic Bureau will look seriously at creating an issue around it. Um, there's obviously a group within the, the Philatelic Bureau that focuses on what types of events are coming up mm -hmm. and what need to be focused on with, with a set of stamps. Those are commemorative issues. And um, they're always open, they tell me, to, to suggestions and ideas from anyone who thinks that, you know, this particular event maybe worthy. Um, I'm not sure if they have, they have something for the land ship. If mm -hmm. not, there should be something soon because mm -hmm. they're celebrating their, what is it, 150th anniversary or something like yes, that? Yes, absolutely, 150th anniversary. And I know you're going to be bombarding them soon <laughs> with, 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 with uh, updated uh, photographs of the bullfinch and so on. Let, 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 why don't we look at that one? This one is one that I, I wanted to focus on a little bit um, because there's an error as far as I'm concerned, in the depiction of the brother's bullfinch. Mm -hmm. If you look at the picture on the right, you can see the, the male and the female. Look at the stamp, and the one in the foreground has a basically white chest. Our mm -hmm. bullfinch does not look like that. I do not know who the artist was, but it's interesting when you look back sometimes mm -hmm. and you see where errors were made, mm -hmm. and somebody missed it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not being particularly critical here, but... Actually, this, that Barbados bullfinch stamp looks like um, a, a, a different kind of sparrow altogether. <laughs> yeah, it, it tends to not depict the bird quite as we see mm -hmm. it. Um, and that, that's the, the problem sometimes with artists, um, but most of them are, are accurate. Um, that depiction was before it was elevated to uh, our endemic bird species. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's now got the, the name Barbadensis in it instead of Noctis. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be just a bullfinch mm -hmm. like the rest of the, the Caribbean islands, but that is our endemic bird there. So I'm a little concerned that it wasn't correctly depicted on the stamp, but that's 34 years or whatever mm -hmm. ago, and, mm -hmm. and things have improved dramatically. Our, our next um, stamp will show the magnificent frigate bird. Um, this is a bird that does not nest in Barbados, but we see it particularly around the, the west coast. If you go to the, the Six Men's Fish Market, you will see some there every day. <coughs> Excuse me, there, there's a lady that, that basically feeds them with, with fish offal. She throws it out, you don't see them, and all of a sudden, within minutes, they've come from somewhere in the heavens and they're feeding. I'll do a program on that sometime in the future because they're fascinating birds. They're huge. They're four to six feet of um, wingspan. And um, they're just fascinating. That's amazing. The one depicted on the stamp is a female, and the one that I've depicted there is also a female. The male has a huge red pouch. <coughs> they do not nest in Barbados. They just hang around here and, and feed. And, and when you have bad weather around, you often see them coming up from, from the islands to the west or southwest of us, Trinidad, St. Lucia, wherever. Mm -hmm. And, and, and wh wh where do they originate? Well, mm -hmm. they're, they're a Caribbean bird. They, oh, okay. they nest um, quite extensively in Antigua. And I, I look forward to the day when I can visit there and photograph them nesting. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they have a great nest in sight in Antigua for them. Okay. Let's take a look at the 10 cent stamp, the Catholic Yes, we, yeah, we, we, we see all the time. We've seen this all over every day, mm -hmm. and in some areas it's almost like a pest. But mm -hmm. I've tried to show in a previous um, series that the Catholic Grit actually is a, a useful bird catching things like mice and whatnot and eating them. And we've looked at slides of that. Um, that's a typical depiction of the Catholic Grit there on, on the, the 10 cent stamp. Do they take actual photographs or do artists? Um, then paint them? Well, previously, it was always artists' um, depictions mm -hmm. from photographs or whatever. Mm -hmm. But more recently, the post office has started using um, actual <laughs> photographs. Mm -hmm. And the, the recent issue of the Lighthouses mm -hmm. was a set of photographs that had been photo retouched. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people were a bit upset because they did not depict the Lighthouses mm -hmm. um, exactly as they were, but mm -hmm. we needed to have them refreshed a little bit. So. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the way, someone did some photoshopping on them and made the lighthouses look more like what people would like to see them. Mm -hmm. um, 
But yes, they 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 use photographs now quite a bit. Yes, yes. Um, I don't know the green heron. I, I don't have it with it, its neck stuck out like how we discussed before. What a pity. Um, on the on the left, the the stamp depicts a, a bit more mature bird um, than the one that I have photographed. When they go into breeding season, the, the green on the back tends to be a lot more prominent. Um, I would suggest that the one I photographed is not so mature and it's not in, in breeding plumage. Um, it's difficult sometimes to get exactly what you want. But that is our green heron or the golling, the long-necked golling. <laughs> And the uh, the Antillian crested hummingbird, or yes. the Dr. Booby. Last week we, we discussed this particular bird, and I bought a picture from Kevin Agar's posting on the internet because I did not have a picture that depicted the crest. What is important with this bird, which is an endemic subspecies, is that the crest, as you can clearly see on the, on the photograph included there, has two colors. It's green and blue. As we talked about last week, the, the equivalent bird or the, the, its cousin from some of the islands just has the green, there's no blue. Mm -hmm. And they've actually depicted it very well on the on the stamp. The stamp is a, I is a yeah, particularly the one in flight. Yeah. 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 I've seen that before. Yes. I had that one in my collection. In your collection. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> all, six, all six stamps. <laughs> no, no, no. I actually did quite an extensive collection. Maybe not all the birds though. Mm -hmm. But we also have um, the ground dove as well. The ground dove is a bird that is often neglected. Um, people see it and they don't see it. They're, they're small doves, they kind of hang around in pairs. I, I believe they actually mate for life. Um, they Isn't this what we would call the wood dove? No, no, the wood dove is coming later. Okay. Um, this is the ground dove. It's much smaller than the, the, wood, the wood dove. But it's very beautiful. Um, the picture there probably isn't showing up very well, my photograph, but its neck has like uh, beautiful iridescent scales on it. And they're, ver cool. they're very weary birds. They don't tend to let you get too close, and they tend to walk away very quickly. The depiction on the stamp, um, unfortunately, did not really bring up the beauty of that bird, but it gave the general idea of it. I, I guess um, 34 years ago, everything was perfect. So, so, so that, that, that dove walks along the ground a lot? They tend to be on the ground feeding and communicating with each other. They, they're they very loving birds. They, they're always uh, having fun with each other. Um, oh, they, they're, very, they're very well matched birds in terms of taking a mate. Mm. Okay. Lovely. So we go from the ground dove to the carib grackle. Which is our blackbird. And um, unfortunately here again the, the stamp did not show the true beauty of this bird. Um, it depicted the form and, and shape of it quite well, but the the blackbird, when the light hits it correctly, can be absolutely beautiful with the iridescent um, blue on its sort of back and wings, up, up uh, the wing coverts, and a kind of a purple around its neck. Okay. What's it called a blackbird, though, if, if it's not really black? Well, in look at the stamp, and you see when it doesn't have light on it, it looks like a real black bird. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, you know, the, the bullfinch, every small bird is a sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> Point taken. And uh, th these uh, denominations are rather unusual, a 28 cent stamp. Uh, again, not the uh, normal figure that I would be accustomed to. But we have here the, the green-throated carib hum hummingbird. Um, the 35 cent stamp. Just to pick up your comment on denominations, the post office has worked out the, the rates for shipping along the postage along with the other post offices in the world. Mm -hmm. And the denominations that they've chosen are the ones that are appropriate for the, the charges at that time. Okay. Now, postage rates have changed, so you may not, I, I have not looked at what the current definitive series um, amounts are, but they may have changed that. Um, you may not. You may not have a 28 cent stamp, no, because it may not be relevant for the, mm -hmm. the postage rates. Yeah, this is a green-throated carob hummingbird. It is the largest of the hummingbirds, the two species that we have on the island, and a stunning um, bird. And we've seen this picture on this show before, but I put it back to compare it with the picture on the, on the postage stamp. Once again, they weren't able to capture in that um, image of the postage stamp the true beauty of the bird. 
And that really only shows that when the bird is fluttering around, hovering or whatever, and it gets the, the light on it, and you see all this beautiful green and blue iridescence, and other colors as well shown through. So, so what's the difference between uh, the green-throated carob hummingbird and the Antillian crested hummingbird? Well, there, there are two species. The Antillian crested is much smaller. It's like half the size of the green-throated carob. Mm -hmm. and, um, different species. Um, is it not the green-throated carob that that um, uh, would have been featured on uh, a prominent Caribbean airline? Um, yes, I think you're correct. Okay. Um, I haven't looked at it closely. I know exactly what you're talking about, but it does tend to look like it. Yes. A lot like it. Yeah, it does. Uh, the the dove. That, that is your wood dove. That's the wood dove. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we seem to have missed the uh, image here, we've jumped ahead to the 50 cent staff. Uh, if we can just come back to 45 cent, um, that's our Zenata dove. If not, we'll go straight to the, the scaling ape pigeon. This is the, the scaling ape pigeon or Ramia. Mm -hmm. Once again, a bird that, if the light doesn't hit it right, mm -hmm. it just looks like a dark grayish, mm -hmm. blackish blue bird. But it's called scaling ape, and they've depicted it very well on the stamp here because you can see the scales, can see the scales mm -hmm. which are kind of a, a reddish, uh, purpley color, depending on how the light hits them. This is the troublesome bird. This is the one that eats the the um, the jamun plums. The jamun plums and then like your car. Yeah, and you can't get and it up. When it and makes a the deposit, uh -huh. if you've got a white car, you've no got a white car that's nicely splotched with, mm -hmm. with purple from the jamun. Mm -hmm. And when you yes. try to get it off, it will often take off the paint. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, they can be quite a quite a problem. I'm almost sorry that we didn't actually um, have the have a picture of the Zenata dove to share because there's a since we're on in the month of Independence, there's an old fable. There oh, there we are, our wood dove. There's That's a old, fable. There's an old fable about wood doves, especially if you see them close to the house. Um, would you like to tell me about that fable? Yes, uh, uh, the old people used to say if you had a wood dove uh, knocking around for too long. It meant that someone was going to pass. Ooh. Well, <laughs> I have a fear knocking around. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody has so passed. I trust yeah. that I am not. That's going to pass in a hurry. Mm. But they, they also mate for life, and, and they're, mm -hmm. they're fascinating to watch. Unfortunately, I don't have any photographs yet of their, their courtship behavior, but it's quite stunning. Mating for don't, life. No, explain the... the uh, the difference between the wood dove and, 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 and the other dove. The ground dove. The ground dove. The, the ground dove is, is less than half the size. It, it's really a tiny tiny dove compared to the, the wood dove. Um, the wood dove is the one we used to catch and eat? Well, I think people have caught them and ate them, but um, you never be, tasted them. Remember, you can you can be charged a hundred dollars <laughs> for each uh, meal that you have. That's an expensive <laughs> word. Very. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, as kids, we used to. We used to catch them, like, if my memory serves me correctly. Yeah, mo most children have, mm -hmm. have caught them because they're a very trusting bird and, and the, many of them will tend to walk right up to you. Mm -hmm. um, and with the with the influx of our hotels and whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, scraps of food and whatnot, they tend to walk all between the tables. It's not the most hygienic situation, mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. that's one of the things that's happened with tourism, I guess. Mm -hmm. wow. All right, and now we come to the banana quick. The banana quit, and the photograph I have we showed last week is a very patriotic photograph. Lovely blue skies, beautiful yellow flowers, and the yellow breast. The banana quit is also known as the yellow breast. And this subspecies, as we discussed last week, is endemic to Barbados because it has a black throat. Um, the, once again, the image on the stamp does not accurately depict the fact that our subspecies has a black throat. But it is possible back in 1979, it was not even recognized as a subspecies. There's been a lot of development in, in techniques and, and study of birds, so that what were considered just an, another banana quit now actually is a subspecies. And a lot more work needs to be done on the banana quits in the Caribbean because it seems as though there may be many species or subspecies that will emerge after detailed uh, DNA testing and the like. So there's a lot of work going on and to be done in that area. All right, and and I, I need to chastise you for divulging in your outtake a source of a lot of the food that I like, you know what I mean? You can't let all Barbados know where you get that good crayfish from. <laughs> yes, um, I had a very busy week this week. 
um, in the beginning of the week and last weekend, I I volunteered to help two young ladies visiting from Lewis and, and Clark uh, College in Portland, Oregon, as part of a team who are doing a, a survey on arachnids, which we can just consider spiders. It includes the scorpions and things like that, but mm -hmm. we don't have any scorpions here. We have pseudoscorpions, which are minute, and they pointed them out to me. But I volunteered along with my good friend Carla Daniels, who, who is known from the Green Sleeves program and also a stalwart in the sea turtle um, mm -hmm. conservation program. We, we went around with them quite a bit, taking them to various sites to mm -hmm. show them where they could collect spiders. Welcome back. Uh, you know, with, with um, Breakfast with the Birds, you get to learn so much. And I am really wondering about uh, all of these stamps that we've shared versus the, um, the amount of birds that we really have in Barbados. How come we don't have like a humongous amount? Um, is, does it have anything, anything to do with the location? Other Caribbean countries seem to have a bird full of birds to show off. Um. Literally. <laughs> Well, we we have, I, I had said originally 262 species of birds that have been recorded for Barbados. I have since gone back, and I stand corrected. I've checked the book Birds of Barbados, and we, uh, just before that went to press, there were two birds added. So we actually have 264 bird species um, that have been seen and recorded on Barbados. As we've talked of in the past, however, many of them are, are vagrants, which means that they may be here just once or twice. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. others, you know, hang around for a little longer. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the things that I'll show you next week is that, that, that they, they've focused on one or two birds that are not even around here anymore. in Barbados. Now, I'm a little curious sometimes as to why, but we'll investigate that next week. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the postage stamps, you know, stamps are important for um, tourism, basically. It's, it's like an ad for the island. If, if the stamps are nicely done, um, people get to learn about our island. They could be considered tiny ambassadors for, for Barbados um, in, in terms of... And one of the sites that we went to on Monday morning early was Joe's River. Mm -hmm. And as we, as we walked up and hiked up to the, the upper reaches of Joe's River, we found Mr. Campbell, Joseph Camp um, Gamble, uh, fishing for crayfish. And it was interesting to watch him. He only caught one when I was there, but it was about seven or eight inches long. And he, he has about three rods that he uses. He, he baits them with young crayfish. He, he makes a trip down the, the stream to overturn some stones and look for the young crayfish. Puts them on a hook apparently and starts to fish. And the, the big ones will come and try to capture the young ones and eat them and they get hooked. And he snatches them out and puts them in his bucket. Mm -hmm. That is an absolutely beautiful picture. It, it really is. I don't, I don't think people realize how beautiful that but, part of Barbados but it is, really, yes. really is. I'm, I've been to Joe's River and, I, and I've feasted, <laughs> you know, on the fine crayfish from uh, Joe's River. So you mentioned just friend, Sean Walks from from Joe's River. I'm yet to uh, taste this hand. Don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna organize something <laughs> for you. Um, Doc, sit right here. We're gonna continue our discussion in just a moment, but we need to get our first traffic update of the morning. Maybe I'll come up with an idea to, to take to the Philatelic Bureau that perhaps mm -hmm. you can have some new issues. I'll be looking forward to some um, um, other species of birds added to um, the, the, the list of stamps. So maybe, you never know, there's room, there's room for... for as, I, as I have looked back, it's mm -hmm. a pity we didn't think of this for International Migratory Bird right. Day. Mm -hmm. And maybe for next year I'll, I'll work on something that I can persuade the Philatelic Bureau to go with. What about birds on money? Well, it is our... Which uh, coin? We have we have a, a ten seagull cent piece on, on the ten a cent seagull, piece. which is not a, a, an indigenous uh, word. There again, I, I I've watched it several times and wondered what influenced the inclusion of the seagull on that particular coin. Um, it would have been nice if it had been something like the Barbados bullfinch. But remember, our coinage was introduced in 1973, and we did not have. Mm -hmm. The bullfinch. Well, they could have used the bird. pelican, if nothing else. Well, the pelican is featured on the dog coin as part of the coat of arms. That's right. Coat of arms here. Mm -hmm. So, so, so they are other opportunities for, for promoting we, for promoting birds, and, and bird watching. Yes, I guess they are, and uh, maybe we will become part of the Caribbean birding trail, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. um, 
the Caribbean Birds organization has been developing. Mm -hmm. Quickly before before we wrap up, I'm not going to ask that question that John wants, that, that Jack wants to ask about linking women to birds. <laughs> when they do. Yeah. But, I, but I'm curious, has this program at all um, bolstered interest in, in birds across Barbados and more and more people uh, asking about birds? Well, I'm happy to say that I'm, I'm really thrilled to see how many people have actually developed an interest in bird watching. Daily now I get people call me or come up to me or meet me on the street and tell me that they appreciate what we're doing here. Um, I just wish, and th this is serious, that we could find a way to put it on YouTube. Perhaps CBC could see how they could get their programs on YouTube. It's weekly, many times a week I get requests for putting the program I, on YouTube. I think anybody can get that, that, that done since we're, we're online. Um, we, we, we're streamed live every morning between 6 and 8. But we've run out of time. Can you imagine that? As always, it's great having you here with us, uh, Dr. John Webster with Breakfast with the Birds. It's a time to take a look at the nice tip of the day. 